Hey everyone, Wednesday, May 13. Uh, it's time for our weekly look at the Pioneer and Modern metagames. And uh, there's some wild changes this week, particularly in Pioneer. It's been quite the week. So what I've done, the, the data you'll see here is taken from all the challenges, super qualifiers, and preliminary results over the last week as reported on MTG Goldfish. Uh, with the addition of today's results that hadn't made it up to Goldfish at the time of this recording. Um, yeah, so I kind of just summed all the appearances together, and let's take a look at where things are. So Pioneer, as I just mentioned, has had a lot of churn, and it is becoming heavily uh, companion-based. Uh, nearly 85 to 90% companion decks I think the last uh, preliminary had all but one uh, companions. We've had one event, I think, that was 100% companion decks. The modern results are starting to increase in companion usage, both in depth, as we see in these results, and in breadth, as you see in the league results, where we just top 70% uh, companion decks for the first time in a league dump. So slowly and steadily rising in modern as well. Pioneer, the metagame is shifting almost as fast as standard does. Um, there's There was an effect in standard where uh, Karuga Fires was the deck for like two weeks and then Yorion decks took over and Karuga basically disappeared. That kind of happened with the top of our meta game in Pioneer this week, as we'll see it here in a moment. Um, and Modern has definitely had a set of decks separate themselves from the rest, according to the winner's meta game that we're looking at here, but continues to also have that long tail of decks that you can get results with. And for there to be 46 different decks across, I think, seven different events this week, uh, is quite a statement to the format. As a comparison, I believe Pioneer had 24 decks show up, something like that, so just barely over half. So let's take a look at Pioneer. So definitely two top decks here. The Lurus uh, Boros Burn deck, uh, as close as you can get to Burn here in Pioneer, definitely... Uh, this was its week this past week. It was all over the uh, events at all levels. Um, and you'll remember last week we saw uh, Orzov Auras with a similar performance where it was head and shoulders above everything else. And if you look here, Orzov Auras isn't even on the front page. So Pioneer has been saying, uh, Orzov Auras, I'm the best deck, you got to beat me, and the Pioneer players have said challenge accepted, and here we are. So Boros Burn has uh, taken over the top spot this week. Demir Inverter now is about 75% um, Yorion versions as opposed to the no companion version. Um, and then there was a new... Jund aggro deck that has shown up. Um, it's mostly based around, I think, Cheville and Croxa are the two primary uh, additions there. It's a Loris based build. Uh, interesting to see that uh, just kind of pop up. And it has been uh, making quite the splash. The Just Guy Fires deck that we started seeing in the last week or so has moved up and uh, now in the top four. Uh, there are a couple of these that are the Luca version, and I think I might separate these out after this week. I think that deck is going to start showing up more and uh, deserves its own slot. I, they are they're looking to do very different things. Boros Heroic is still hanging around right in that next level. Uh, Lotus Breach dropped a little bit this week. Uh, I think part of that is due to uh, the burn success. Um, but it just it didn't do as well as it's been doing. Um, the Azorius Devotion or the White Splashing Blue Devotion deck with Yorian at the helm hanging around. Um, 
definitely doing its thing. And then Obzon Rally is another deck that's been rising lately. That's the um, Goldfish, I think, calls it Obzon Sacrifice, but it's a Rally the Ancestors deck using uh, in Obzon. There is an Orzhov only version of it, but the Obzon version has been much more successful. It's basically splashing green for Seder Wayfinder and making. Um, oh, the name's escaping me, but the new uh, two drop that's hybrid Golgari. Um, that ha it makes that card easier to cast because now you've got green mana in your deck as well. So that's the top of Pioneer. Uh, the next level, uh, Hardened Scales, still hanging around. Niv to Light, still hanging around. It's most, I think it's entirely the Yorion version in Pioneer. Um, no other uh, companion has really seen any success lately. The Jeskai Cycling deck is moving up a little bit with Zerda at the helm. You'll notice here, every single one of these decks is using a companion. The only deck that is in the top decks at all in the format that is not using a companion is Lotus Breach. And even there, two or three of the results here out of the 12 used Lurus. So, yeah. You see what I'm saying about companions and Pioneer. Uh, Mono Red Aggro, the Obosh build, hanging in there. And now we see Orzov Auras. It dropped all the way down out of the top 10. Uh, and now it's just kind of become a second tier deck. And we'll see what happens if this was a one week effect or what's going on here. But it's, it's something to see. The Orzov Doom Foretold deck is starting to pop up a little more. There is an Esper version of it that I saw show up in one of the tournaments as well. Uh, interesting uh, little enchantment-based control deck there. Uh, and then a Sultai mid-range deck. This is not Sultai Delirium. You'll note Sultai Delirium is nowhere on this list. Um, Sultai mid-range with Gigantha at the helm has started to show up a little bit. As well as a couple of control decks, Blue White and Bant. The Blue White one is running Zerda because all the uh, permanents are either Planeswalkers or basically cast out. Uh, I think there was one other. Uh, I think it's an Omen and it's got an activated ability, so that works. And then the Bant control with Yorion is right there at the bottom. And then other decks we saw show up this week were um, just plain Mono White Devotion, no Blue Splash. Bant Spirits has had one result. The deck is almost gone from the format. Uh, the Gyruda Clone Tribal deck showed up, as did a an interesting Blue White Heliod build that's not a control deck, and it's not a Devotion deck. It's basically a mid-range deck with the Heliod Walking Ballista combo in it. So... If you're looking for, you know, something a little different in that Heliod space, take a look at that one. And then Simic Ramp. Uh, there was one, uh, I think that was a Yorion build. There was just one appearance of that. Decks that have disappeared from the format. Mono Green Walkers is gone. Mono Black Aggro is gone. All the Insole Artifact decks are just not showing up. Golgari Stompy is gone. Gruel Stompy is gone. There wasn't a single Gruel Aggro or mid-range deck that I saw in the results at all this week. And then Sultai Delirium has pretty much disappeared. So Pioneer has remade itself in the month that, or less than a month that um, Ikoria is out, has been out, and it's actually quite impressive to see. Um, the top of the format is, with the exception of the two controlling combo decks in uh in, uh, sorry, Demir Inverter and Lotus Breach, um, the format has basically rebuilt itself. So let's go on to Modern. We've basically got five, you could say four decks at the top of the format. Uh, Boros Burn with Loris at the helm is definitely the top deck. You can make an argument here if you want to say Primeval Titan decks and lump together Titan Field and Amulet Titan, those two would be the number two deck. If you separate them out, because they do play relatively differently um, than their five and, uh, four and five, but then Jund with Loris, um, I did not see 
a single traditional Jund, not running Lurus and running Liliana's. I didn't see a single one in the results this week. And then Gruel Monsters, the Obosh version, which uh, has successfully rebuilt itself. Um, that deck is putting up some strong results. There was even a Jund version that I saw um, with Angrath and Fatal Pushes and a little um, some other stuff in it that was kind of interesting. Nice little uh, spicy twist there. This is basically your top tier. Uh, if you look at those Titan decks and you add them up to 19, Gruel Monsters are at 13. I think we're at, we start at 6 on the next row, something like that. So that there's some separation here. So this is the top of Modern right now. Your next level, um, I would lump all of these in kind of together. Eurosa, uh, the Yorion builds are the only one doing any anything. Uh, Devoted Devastation here with Lurus. Eldrazi Tron. Uh, tr traditional Tron. And half of these results are using Gigantha and half are not. So it's just the only real trade-off is you can't play Walking Ballista in the main if you're running Gigantha. Bulls has definitely started making some waves. Um, there is a Bant version that has been showing up, but mostly it's the... Uh, the traditional green-white with Lurus at the helm. Hardened Scales is back with Lurus. Uh, it has, Lurus has helped it survive its, uh, the Mox Opal ban. Ad Nauseam was the control deck that showed up this week. Um, Living End is another one that you see sometimes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Ad Nauseam has kind of staked its claim as the top non-companion control uh, combo deck. And then, just like we saw in Pioneer, right at the tail end of the top tiers, we've got a couple of control decks. There's a Yorion-based uh, four-color snow control deck. And then traditional blue-white control has started to make a reappearance. I did see one running Kahira, but most of them are not running a companion. And Terminus is back. The, those builds are running Terminus. So... Uh, a little bit of a surprise there. What's old is new again. And then some of the rest, uh, a whole bunch of... Uh, I listed all the three and two ofs. Uh, one thing I did find a little bit entertaining is that Boros Colossus Hammer deck is starting to show a little bit of consistent results. So that might be something to watch for here. Um, as I mentioned in the modern video yesterday, just the idea of putting a Colossus Hammer on an Ink Moth Nexus just cracks me up. Um, Storm and Infector around. Demir Control is showing up a little bit. This is a Lurus build. The only creatures are um, Snapcaster Mage, and I think it's running Thing in the Ice. Uh, and then, um, you know, our two ofs here. Rock, a couple of Grixis decks, and a, a white splashing version of the Mono Red Blitz deck. And then these are some of the one ofs that I find interesting uh, that appeared. Neobrand did make one appearance. Titan Shift, so Scape Shift is still being played. Uh, five Color Nib still hanging around. Humans has almost disappeared from the format. Um, still around a little bit, but it did not have a good week. And this last one here, Gyruda Titan. Uh, I've mentioned it in the League videos, but there is a... Gyruda deck with Primeval Titan and other splashy, even CMC cards. Uh, I've seen Ashen Rider. I've seen um, Ulamog. Uh, you know, basically pick your uh, Platinum Empyrean has appeared. Pick your nasty, even CMC big creatures. And there's probably room for it in this Gyruda deck. Uh worth looking at it looks it looks like a lot of fun to play so that's about it for today we're definitely seeing some changes and some adaptations um but in my opinion i'm a little concerned at the increasing adoption of companions uh it hasn't affected deck diversity per se but i feel like it is affecting play style diversity where, especially with the Lurus decks, there's certain things that they're just trying to do. They're trying to just get more resilient and use the graveyard as card advantage. 
and that's an I, there's definitely arguments to be made both directions here on whether this is good for the format or not i have seen a lot of players complaining about it i've seen a lot of players saying they're having a ton of fun so it feels very personal and it will be interesting to see the direction wizards takes the formats in the future uh, legacy and vintage two formats that i don't really cover have uh, ban announcements coming up next week it'll be interesting to see what happens there what that might portend for the future in modern or pioneer we'll have to see if you enjoy what i'm doing here do please like subscribe uh, i appreciate you hanging around and watching these videos if you uh, want to know when my next one's up do hit that notification bell and that's about it for today we definitely are seeing adaptations in the formats to be sure there are changes afoot that's about it for today enjoy yourself have fun and sling some cardboard see you tomorrow bye, -bye.